Blast me to Bermuda. It's time for another Mad Merlin's video. Hello and welcome back. Today we're going to continue our Yu-Gi-Oh! GX Speed Duels Duel Academy Box deck overview with that little obelisk pixie, Alexis Rhodes. So, as with the Chaz and Jaden, we'll look at the skills, all the cards, combos, etc. Then we'll give you some strengths, weaknesses, as well as um, ideas on how to improve the deck. So, first off, we have Alexis's two skill cards. So, first off is Cyberblade Fusion, which this one is a pretty handy one and is the standard um, deck's standard skill. Uh, so once per turn, you can discard one fusion summon, uh, discard one card. Fusion summon a cyber blader by sending a twelve cyber or blade skater from your field to the graveyard. As fusion materials, and the other material is from your hand. Uh, or deck to the graveyard. That cyber blader gains four hundred eight attack, and this skill can be used twice per duel. So if you've managed to get a Secret Rare Cyberblader, or even have two copies of this set anyway, you can get two Cyberbladers out by simply sending the materials on the field and or handle deck to the graveyard. And you can give it a nice attack booster as well. Okay, her second <coughs> excuse me, her second skill is Machine Angel Ascension. So this is a once per turn skill during your main phase. You can use one of these effects, and each one can only be used once per duel. So you can discard one spell and add a Cyber Angel Ritual Monster or Machine Angel Ritual Spell from your deck to your hand. Or shuffle one Cyber Angel Ritual Monster or one Machine Angel Ritual Spell from your graveyard into your deck. So it's a nice little double-sided um, double skill. It um, gives you a search mechanic and also a recycle mechanic. So it's very handy. So if you want to focus the deck more around the Cyber Angels, this is a skill for you. Okie dokie, on to our monsters. So the Alexis deck actually has one of the highest monster counts out of the GX decks. So straight up, we've got her only normal monster, which is Blade Skater. So a 1400, 1500, um, level 4 Earth Warrior type monster, just pretty good, pretty standard, and also part of the fusion for Cyberblader. Next we have Senju of the Thousand Hands, who, when he's normal or flip summoned, you can add a ritual monster from your deck to your hand. And then we got the other half of that, Sonic Bird, when his card is normal or flip summoned, you can add a ritual spell from your deck to your hand. So two search mechanics there. One search is the monster, one search is the spell. So they're both very handy. DD Warrior Lady, I don't actually recall Alexis using this, I might be mistaken. But she's one of my favourite cards. I used to run two of her in my um, Chaos deck for the full Yu-Gi-Oh! TCG. Um, basically, after damage calculation, when this card battles an opponent's monster, you can banish that monster and also this card. So she's a pretty good level 4 light monster with 1500 attack, 1600 defense. Combat, best plan for her is to set it face down, and then if your opponent attacks with, its big, with their big monster, you can banish both. Or if you want to, even just get rid of one single monster off their side of the field. And even out of the game to mess with their strategies, you could use her to attack and then banish both. Because you don't have to be doesn't have to win, doesn't have to lose the fight. You can banish either way. Next we've got Warrior Lady of the Wastelands, who is a level 4 Earth monster. And another what basic warrior type. This one allows you to um, summon a earth monster with 1500 or less attack from your deck in attack position when it's destroyed by battle and sent to the graveyard. Her attack points and defense points aren't enough, too much to sniff home about, but she works really well and allows you to pull out some really good combo cards. 
one of which is Etoil Cyber here. So another level four earth monster. This one gains 500 attack when it attacks directly uh, during the damage step. So it bumps up to 1700 for inflicting damage. But only when it attacks directly. And there's a few cards in here that will allow you to combo that really well. So next we got Cyber 2-2, who can attack directly as long as your opponent doesn't control a monster with um, lo a lower attack than her. So yeah, if any if the attack of all monsters your opponent controls is higher than this card, it can attack directly. But with only a thousand points on her attack, she's bound to um, always come across most opponents that she can defeat. Next up, another level 4 earth monster, we got Cyber Gymnast. So once per turn you can discard a card, target an attack position monster and destroy it. So, very handy card, costs a card to destroy one, but pretty good effect from a level 4 monster. Uh, not too good on the attack, but she has a nice 1800 defense there, so you can use, easily set her and hope that you hold off an opponent's attack for a turn. Rounding out the Cyber Monsters, we got level 6 Light Type Cyber Prima. So if this card is Tribute Summoned, you can destroy all face-up spells on the field. So if your opponent is running a lot of continuous spells or field spells, or even equip spells, Tribute Summon this girl out, and she can take them all out. With a nice 2300 attack, 1600 defense, she's a pretty good level 6 monster. Not the best, but she's still pretty good for what she is. You're using her mainly for the effect to try and clear your opponent's spells off the field. So next we have Cyber Angel Benten, who is the first of three ritual monsters in the deck. So you can ritual summon this card with Machine Angel Ritual. If this card destroys a monster by battle and sends it to the graveyard, inflict damage to the opponent equal to that monster's original attack. Oh, original defense, even, in the graveyard. If this card is tributed, you can add one light fairy monster from your deck to your hand. So she can search out um, the other ritual monsters, and if you need it, you can even rich, uh, search out Senju. But really with, I think, this in the deck, you don't really need Senju as much. You could probably swap that out for some extra cyber cards. But she's pretty good. Level 6 ritual monster, 1800 and 1500. Not the best stats for level 6, but still pretty good. Next we have Cyber Angel Ida-10, who is another level 6 light type fairy ritual monster. New ritual summon this card with Machine Angel Ritual, and if this card is ritual summoned, you can add a ritual spell from your deck or graveyard to your hand. If this card is tributed, you can make all ritual monsters you control gain a thousand attack and defense. So she's one of the um, better Machine Angels. Um, both for effect and for stats, 1600 and 2000, so she's not too bad. Uh, the good thing about the this Iderton and Benten is they're level 6, so they can make use of the Ritual Weapon Equipment spell in spell cards. But also they come in handy with their bonus effects as well. So you can add the Ritual spell card from your deck or graveyard, so if you've just Use your ritual spell to summon her, you can gain it back again. And also, if you tribute this card, you can make all other ritual monsters you control gain a thousand tag and defense. That's a pretty good buff. Okay, the final card in the deck is Cyber Angel Izana. So, this is a level 8 light type fairy ritual monster. You can ritual summon this card with Machine Angel Ritual. If this card is Ritual Summon, you can make your opponent send one spell or trap they control to the graveyard. When this attacking card destroys an opponent's monster by battle and sends it to the graveyard, you can activate the, this effect. This card makes a second attack on an opponent's monster in a row. Once per turn, when your opponent activates a card or effect that targets a Cyber Angel Ritual Monster you control, a quick effect this is, you can shuffle one Ritual Monster from your graveyard into your deck, and if you do, you can destroy one card your opponent controls. So this is pretty much Alexis's um, big tough monster out of the deck. 2500, 2600, 
pretty good for level 8 standards. Her effects are obviously what wins the game for her. So she's got the um, ability to attack another monster. It has to be another monster, so you can't make a direct attack. But making two attacks in a turn is pretty good. Uh, also make sure you it is sent to the graveyard, otherwise the effect won't trigger. And also you got the um, secondary ability to once per turn when your opponent activates a card effect that targets a Cyber Angel Ritual Monster, including itself, of course, you can shuffle one Ritual Monster from your graveyard into your deck and then destroy one card your opponent controls. So if you've already used the uh, one of the other two to help Ritual Summon um, Islana, or you've Ritual Summoned it in the previous turn and tributed it in order to trigger its other effect, this card allows you to regain that card. There is one other monster in the deck that I forgot to cover. Because she's at the back of the back of the deck, and that is Cyberblader. So this is Alexis's um, fusion card. She's a level seven fusion monster. Oh, I thought she used to be level six. Or well, she's gone up a level. But she's got a nice effect that triggers depending on how many cards your opponent controls. So she's a, a level seven warrior fusion monster with Ethel of Cyber and Blade Skater as material. Her attack's 2100, defense is 800, so she's not that good on defense. Her fusion summon must be done with the above materials. This card gains the following effect depending on the number of opponent monsters. So if they have one monster, this card cannot destroy battle. If they have two monsters, this card attack is doubled to 42. And three, your opponent's activated card effects are negated. So really, you would like to double up on Cyber Blader, especially if you're going to use the first skill. It's a good way to um, make use of all the effects that she has. And also, she's a pretty good um, beat stick for 2100. I know she's level 7, and 2100 is pretty poor for the higher level. But she is a fusion monster, and... Her effects actually really do buff even more. So um, I will mention again when we get to the um, over the um, suggested extra cards to add is basically just double up on some of her materials. Okay, next up we've got the spells. So she only has five spells in the deck. First off is the Warrior Returning Alive which allows you to target a warrior in the graveyard and add it to your hand. So it's handy to get back the materials for Cider Blader or even some of the other warrior types in the deck. We have Ritual Weapon. Equip only to a level 6 or lower Ritual Monster. It gains 1500 attack and defense. So Ben 10 and Isaten. No, Isaten. No, Isaten. Um, yeah, Isaten and Ben 10. Will basically benefit from this card. Boosting their attack and defense quite considerably. We next have Machine Angel Ritual, which is the only ritual card in the deck. So this card must be used, can be used even, to ritual summon a Cyber Angel Ritual Monster. You must tribute monsters from your hand or field whose total levels equal or exceed the level of the ritual monster you are ritual summoning. If a light monster you control would be destroyed by a card effect, you can banish this card instead. So not only a basic ritual card for any of the Cyber Angel ritual monsters, but a nice um, once per once per game save by banishing this card to protect one of your light monsters. Next up we've got a quick play spell, Berserk Scales. So you target one monster you control, except a monster that is attacking directly. It gains a fast attack. Also, it cannot attack directly for the rest of this turn. But during the end phase of this turn, it loses 2,000 attack. So a pretty good combo card with any of your um, higher or lower attack point monsters. The attack point boost is always good, especially when your opponent you could lure your opponent into a trap basically by setting this and then using a low attack monster as the target. The downside is you do lose 2,000 attack at the end phase, so you could end up going down to zero, but it's worth a one-shot, I think. Not my favourite card in the deck, though. 
but I have used it in one of the test duels I did with the decks and it did work pretty well. Finally, we've got Cosmic Cyclone. So you pay a thousand life points, target a spell trap on the field and banish it. So I think this card is a really good card. It can be used in pretty much any and every deck. High um, points cost for a thousand to banish a card, but if it's a good card your opponent's hoping to use, it's well worth the investment. And finally, the traps, we've only got three. So we've got Hallowed Life Barrier, discard a card, you take no damage from your opponent's cards this turn, and also your monsters cannot be destroyed by battle this turn. So this is pretty much a upgraded version of Waboku. Uh, Waboku just meant you took no battle damage. This one negates damage and effect damage, plus it allows all your monsters to be protected. But it costs you the card, so it's not too bad. Double Passe. So this is one of Alexis's originally anime-only um, trap cards. Um, so when your opponent's monster declares an attack on a face-up attack decision monster you control, you can make that attack a direct attack, then inflict damage to your opponent equal to the attack targets. Also, that monster that you control can make an indirect attack on your next turn. So this is often used in duels against, well, pretty much quite a few opponents, it's a high risk, high reward card as you not only gain a direct attack by not even attacking, you do take it to hit obviously, but you gain pretty much two free direct attacks. You deal to the, your opponent the damage of that attack target. So say it was commonly used with um, Etoil Cyber. So basically she got a 1200 points of effect damage from Dupla Passe. Then in her next turn she gains attack, gain, deals 1700 attack damage for a direct attack. So like I said, you can take a hit, but it's going to be a good reward for it. And finally we have Jar of Avarice. So this targets five cards in your graveyard, except itself. Shuffle all five into the deck and then draw a card. You can only activate Jar of Avarice once per turn. So this is a good card to help recycle a lot of the cards in the graveyard. It can work in pretty much any of the decks and I think it works really well in this deck, especially with all the different ritual spells and uh, all the different ritual monsters and then either one spell. So there we have it, that's our deck overview. So, um, strengths of the deck. I think out of all the decks, it's a pretty well-balanced one. It works well with the Cyber Angel and the Warriors types combination. You have good hand control with plenty of searchers and recyclers. Um, that's about it. The weaknesses, though, there's a very high risk of a low hand size, especially when you're using your ritual summonings. Um, there's also the, as I mentioned, the high risk, high reward cards, and the only other weakness really is you get that one ritual spell for the free monsters. So you could easily double up on the Machine Angel ritual. So improvements then, like I said, one extra copy of Machine Angel ritual wouldn't hurt the deck. I'd probably, personally, I'd either remove Berserk Scales or Hallowed Life Barrier. Then add in an extra uh, Machine Angel Ritual. Um, if you want more searching power, you could add in reinforcements to the army to double up on gaining the warriors. Especially if you want to pull out DD Warrior Lady or Warrior Lady, or even one of the House of Cyberblader. And that's pretty much it, I think, for that deck. So, all that's left for me to do is to say thank you for watching. Be sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Also, if you'd like to help the channel out, there's of course my affiliate links for Curtain Games, Buy Me A Coffee page, social medias, and my eBay page. So, I'll see you next time for more mad content. Goodbye.